Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Mindstyle Minecraft server development series. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys about entities. Entities are things that appear on the server for a period of time, like items that are on the ground, players, uh, monsters, you know, any mob, that's an entity as well. Projectiles, like when you shoot an arrow, fireballs, anything that you would spawn and then at some point could be removed. That is an entity. So what I'll be doing is making the spawn command here so that I can show you guys how to make entities yourself, how to spawn them, and also how to configure them. So every entity has the top level class entity. So entity, entity is equal to, and then to create a new entity, you could just do new entity. And now you need to specify the entity type. So entity type dot, and you have all the different entities in the game. So you have uh, things like animals, like mobs and stuff like that. You have, you know, like I said before, you could do arrows even. Arrow, like that. Um, yeah, anything like that, that's an entity. So let's try doing a camel, for example. So we can do a camel. So this alone will create an entity for you, but it will not spawn it. So to spawn an entity in your world, you do entity dot set instance. Set instance, and you pass it the instance as well as the location where you want to spawn it, and it will spawn it. To make it easy for us, I'm going to make it so that the entity spawns in the same location where the player ran the command. So let's go ahead and take this and check to see if the person who ran the command is a player. So once we have that, we can now do player.get instance. And then we can also get the player's position by doing player.get position. And there we go. That's literally all we need to spawn a camel. We simply create a new entity object and specify the type as a camel. And then we set the instance to tell it where to spawn the entity and it will spawn it. So now let's go ahead and register this command so that we can actually test it out on the server. All right, I'm on the server now, so to test this out, we're going to do slash spawn. And boom, there's a camel inside of me. Hey, yo, okay, so yeah, here's the camel. He looks very cool. He's not going to really move around, or you can't really do anything with it, because same as everything else with Mindstorm, it's not implemented. So um, whenever you hit it, it doesn't actually take damage. That's actually for another reason, which I'll tell you in a second. So it doesn't really move around. In a future video, though, I'll show you guys how you can work with the AI of this entity here so that you can make it actually move around and do what normal entities like to do. For example, if you spawn a zombie, you can make the zombie attack people and, you know, stuff like that. But for now, we have spawned a camel entity and now it exists in this world and we could do stuff with it. So we could do entity dot, you know, set velocity to change its movement to make it go in a certain direction. Perhaps you have stuff like set auto viewable, which decides if the entity should be auto viewable by nearby players, which means that players can view it if it's in range. You can make it glow if you want to. So we're going to make it glow, see what that looks like. And you can also set no gravity. We'll do that as well, but since it's already on the ground, let's make it so that it spawns above. So we'll do zero to zero, which will add two to the Y axis. So it should spawn above where the player is by two. Okay, back on the server now. So if I do slash spawn, there we go. Now our camel has spawned in the air and you can see that it's not falling down because there is no gravity on the server. So that's cool. And you can also see that it's glowing by the little outline that it has. So that's also pretty cool. So that's some of the basic things that you can do with an entity, but but something that you can also do is configure the entity's metadata, which is very similar to how we do it with blocks and items. So if I know that this entity is a camel, all I need to do is do camel meta, camel meta is equal to entity dot get entity meta, and just cast that entity meta into the camel meta like that. And so every single entity type that you have has a corresponding meta that goes along with it. So if you have a zombie, then you would get the zombie meta. If you have a arrow, you would get the arrow meta and so on, okay? And this will allow you to edit the specific metadata or information about this specific entity type. So we can do camel meta dot, and we have stuff like get last pose change tick, is dashing, set dashing, stuff that probably pertains only to camels. I don't really know much about camels, but but I think these should only be for camels. Let's change it to let's change it to a zombie so I can just show you what that looks like. So we can do zombie, and then now this would be a zombie meta, like that. Now we have created a zombie and spawned it on the server, and then we're also getting the zombie meta so that we can do stuff that only pertains to zombies. So zombie meta dot, and you have stuff like setting it to baby. So like a baby zombie, for example, so you can do true. Also, I think it makes sense to configure most of the stuff before you even spawn it because you shouldn't change it to a baby after you've already spawned the zombie, right? So set it to baby true, and then you could do, you know, literally whatever else. You can set a custom name if you want to. So set custom name. This is expecting a component, so a component we already know about component.txt and we could say zombie, you know, grandpa or something like that. We can even give it a color. But to actually make that name appear, we can do zombie meta dot set custom name visible and just pass in true. So that will make it actually appear. Let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, back in the server. So now we'll do slash spawn and boom, look, there's our zombie grandpa. It is a baby zombie, as you can see. It has our custom name, which is cool. 
we can set that to whatever we want using the text components that we learned about. It's glowing still. So these entities that you spawn are really customizable, which is awesome. Using not only the methods available on the entity class itself, but also on the metadata for the entity, you get a lot more information that you can customize. Now I told you before that entity is the top level class for all entities, but there's also subclasses of that that implement entities, like a living entity. This is just an entity that has life, I guess you could say. It has a health and also it's able to die. Of course, this is not implemented by all entity types. This is only going to be for certain things like zombies or stuff that just kind of makes sense for a living entity. And then there's also another one called entity creature, which enables pathfinding and AI and all that stuff so it can move around. But if you make this a living entity and you change the type here to a living entity, what you can do is actually access more methods upon this, like entity.set. And now you have other options like set helmet or set health that weren't currently, that were not previously available. So I can set the health of the zombie. I can set the helmet. So the helmet's expecting a item stack. We already know how to do item stack. So we'll do item stack dot of, and we could do material gold. Um, let's try, let's see if it lets us do a gold apple. I don't know what that will look like. I don't think that would even work, but let's just try that out. Okay, back on the servers, so that's spawn. And <laughs> wow, look at that. We have spawned a zombie with a golden apple on top. That looks really weird. I had no idea that was even possible. That's really cool. But yeah, there's uh, living entities. There's cre entity creatures. You also have projectiles like entity projectile. That's another subclass for specifically for projectiles like arrows and stuff like that. I'm not going to really go into each of these in this one episode. But as we you know progress through the series, we're going to explore some of these different subclasses probably and. Uh, check those out to accomplish different things. But I think you guys understand the gist of what you need to know to be able to spawn entities and configure them, which is really cool. I found a piece of code that I just want to copy and paste so that I can show you guys that you can make your zombie move around if you want to. So I can just change the name of this to entity. Uh, and currently it's not a, and currently it's a living entity, not an entity creature, right? So it doesn't have AI capabilities. So we'll change it to that type entity creature. And a zombie can be entity creature, so that's going to be fine. If you try making a new entity creature out of like a boat or something like that, like the documentation suggests, um, you will get an exception. It will crash the uh, the server for the player, I believe. Uh, like it just doesn't work for some reason, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, it kind of makes sense because a, how can a boat be a creature anyway? Anyway, so I'm going to take this and pass it in everywhere here. I'll have a separate video on, you know, how to do all of this, of course. So don't worry about that. So what this should do is basically after it spawns the zombie, it should add an AI group. So it's saying it should attack and then it's also going to choose the closest entity target, which is a player. So if there's a player around the zombie, it's going to chase it essentially and try and attack it. All right, let's try it out. So spawn. And look at that. He is chasing me now with his stu stupid little golden apple head. So he will chase me until forever, basically. That's just an example of how you can do something like that. We'll explore that more in the future. Something else that I found out, which is really cool, is that entities themselves have event nodes directly on them. So I can do entity dot event node, and you have an event node specifically for this entity already created, and it's filtered specifically for entity events as well. So with this, I can do stuff like, you know, add listener. I don't have to create my event node myself. I can add the listener, and then uh, now I just need the event type that I want to listen to. So this would be an entity event. And these are all the different examples of entity related events. And this event node here will be only matching to events that target this specific entity, right? So if I do, for example, the entity spawn event, and this entity is not the one that spawns, uh, it won't be triggered, obviously, in this listener here. It will only trigger this specific listener if this is the entity involved in the event, in the event okay? So I can do entity spawn event. I can make a lambda out of that. And then now I can make some code. And I could say something like, let's say player dot get instance uh, dot send message. The grandpa zombie has spawned something like that. I don't think that's going to work because it expects a component. So let me take that component dot text like that. Okay, there we go. So now we're sending a message to the entire instance. So everybody in the instance that the grandpa zombie has spawned whenever it does spawn. So whenever it triggers the entity spawn event, we're adding the listener before we're doing the spawning, which makes sense because if we add it after, then it's going to, the entity is going to spawn before this is even registered. So it won't trigger the event listener. Okay. Um, so we can add another one or as many as you want. So we could do, for example, the entity death event as well, because this is a living entity or entity creature, which is also an extension of living entity. It has the capability of having health and also dying. So this could happen. So if the entity ever dies, this will be triggered. So we could say the grandpa zombie has been killed, for example. 
And now since the event node is already part of this entity and we don't have to worry about it, it's already created for us, we don't have to add this event node to the global event handler or uh, the, as a child of something else. So that's pretty cool as well. You can just directly create these listeners for the entity specifically. Okay, slash so spawn. All right, it says the grandpa zombie has spawned, as you can see in the chat below. So that event listener does work, as you can see. If we do the player entity interact event, listening to this specific event on this event node will not work because the event node is filtered to only entity events, but it's also filtered using a predicate to only match to events that have a entity that matches this current entity. So what I mean is that if you do event.get, you have get target, which matches to that entity, if you interact with it, but the predicate is trying to match to get event, and that's just not going to work. That's not even available. So for example, if I go to the one above, I can do events.get entity, and this matches to our zombie entity in the event node, but this one doesn't have it, so it just doesn't work. So I know that's a little confusing. I probably didn't explain that good enough, but the point is, is that certain entity events, like this one, for example, do, do not work, and that's, that's why it's because it doesn't match to that entity specifically. And it also just might be because it's a player related event as well, a player entity interact event, not just a entity event on its own. So that's also a possibility. So if we really wanted to listen to that event, what we could do is make a event node and also just add it to the global event handler like we did in the last episode with the inventories. So we could do var entity node is equal to event node dot type. And we could say entity node and we could do a event filter of only entities or rather entity related events. And then we could do entity node dot add listener. And now we could do the player entity interact event. And the reason I'm even showing you this is because I want to show you guys how you can detect whenever you right click an entity or hit an entity. This is the event that would be triggered by that. Um, so what you could do is do events dot get and we could get the entity that was hit. This would be our zombie in this case. We could get the player who actually hit the zombie or not even just hit them, also right click them. Um, get the instance that it happened in, get the hand that was used. So this could be the main hand or the off hand. You can also get the position at which it happened as well, okay? So to demonstrate this, I'll just print out a message, or rather we'll send the player a message. So message. you write, you interacted with the grandpa zombie. And we're also going to print out the hand that was used as well, because I just want to show you guys what happens. And last but not least, we need to add this event node to our global event handler. So add a child entity node, just like that. All right, so here's the zombie. And if I right click it, we get main, you interacted with the grandpa zombie and then off you interacted with the grandpa zombie. So even though I right clicked it using this, I guess that's my main hand that's showing right now, it still triggered both the main hand and the off hand. So the listener is gonna be hit twice. So you just wanna make sure that you filter um, for only one specific hand that you wanna handle. So what I'll do is just add some code to this saying, if the events.get hand, is not equal to and dot main, then if it's not equal to that, then we're just gonna return so it doesn't run any of the code after that. That way it only runs for the main hand. Let's also make sure that this listener only runs for the actual grandpa zombie itself, the one that we just spawned, because currently we have the player entity interact event. So this will be triggered for every single entity that the player interacts with. It's not filtered to this specific zombie entity. So to filter it, we're gonna do events dot get target is not equal to entity. Entity, again, is our zombie that we spawned above. In the future, we should probably give it a better name, but that's okay for now. So again, this will only run the code under it if it's using the main hand. And also the entity involved that was interacted with should be the zombie entity that we just spawned in this command. So just to test this out, let's make it so that whenever they right click or interact with this entity, it just kills it, okay? And we know that we can kill it because we spawned it as an entity creature, which is also a living entity, which is an entity with health, like I told you before, right? So if we do event.get target, we know that it gives us an entity, so we just need to add a piece of code here. We can do if event.get target is an instance of living entity, living entity, then we can go ahead and do living entity.kill. That is a method only available on living entities. That's why we had to cast it because it doesn't make sense to kill something that is not living. So this will, as the documentation says, kills the entity, triggering the entity death event. So not only will it kill the entity, it will also trigger this entity death event that we added before so we can test that out. However, if you don't have a living entity and you just have a normal non-living entity, you can remove it from the server by doing just remove. That will essentially bypass killing it um, and also, like it says, does not trigger the entity death event because you're not killing it. You're just directly removing it from the server. So that's another option if you want to. But let's go in and kill it so we can see what that looks like. But if we right click it, boom, he dies. So you can see that he died. 
play the little death animation. It says you interact with the grandpa zombie. The grandpa zombie has been, been killed. So not only did it print out the message from our interact listener, but it printed out the message from the death listener as well. So both of those are working as we expect. So there we go. That's the basics of creating entities and you know configuring them and adding event listeners for them and using the built-in event node for them. I just want to show you guys one more thing just for funsies. Um, we're going to do var entity name arg. We're going to add a syntax to this command. Entity name arg is equal to argument type. And then you have all these options that we're already familiar with, but another one is entity type. We want a specific entity type. And what this will do is automatically give the player a list of you know entity types to choose from, which is pretty cool. So let's give it a name, entity type. And then now we'll add a syntax for that. So add syntax, add the lambda, and then add the argument. So entity name arg. So now to run this command, you have to do slash spawn space and then the entity type. So first, let's just check to see if it's a player like before, because we're going to do the same code as above, which we need the player for. And then if it is a player, what we can do is get the actual entity type. So entity type, entity type is equal to context dot get and then pass in the arg. So what's cool about this is that it will give you a list of uh, entity types to choose from when you're running the command. And then inside of the syntax here, it's automatically going to get it as a actual entity type variable, which is even cooler. It automatically does all that hard work for you, which is awesome. And so with that entity type, we're just going to do entity, entity is equal to new entity, ent entity. And then we're gonna pass in that entity type to create that entity. And then now we're gonna spawn it by doing entity .set instance. And just as before, we're going to spawn it in the player's location. So in player.get instance and then player.get position. There we go. That's literally all we got to do. We are creating this argument here. We are creating a syntax for that argument. We're grabbing the entity type from the command that was run and then creating an entity of that type. Let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, back on the server now. So we'll do slash spawn. So that's the same as before. We get our zo zombie grandpa here. You know, this crazy little guy. Let's kill him. There we go. He's dead. But now if we do slash spawn space, we have all these different options here. So because we're using this built-in entity type for the argument, it's able to give us a list of all the entity types that it supports. So we can literally just choose whatever you want, like evoker. I don't even know what that is, to be honest with you. And there we go. That's an evoker. Cool. Um, you can do arrow. So that spawns an arrow, and it just falls to the ground because there's gravity. Um, you can do an axolotl. There's that crazy looking thing. So yeah, I just want to show you guys how to do something like that. I think that's pretty interesting so that you can create commands that accept entity types and then you could, uh, you know, do whatever you want with that information. But yeah, that's all I got for this episode, everybody. Thank you for watching. Now you guys should know how to create entities and configure them. And uh, yeah.